Lynch. Our guest today, Hammer 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 Dr. Dr. Carl Brand. And he's been telling us we're pretty spoiled. We just don't accept anymore that our aches and pains, our griefs and disappointments are part of living. Dr. Brand's book is called Deliverance from Daily Stress. I strongly recommend it. And I'm Kate Forbes, winding up another week of Straight Talk. See you on Monday. One. We're out to a real pro. I want to wish you a happy 100th birthday, Kate. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on here? Come here. Happy anniversary. Come on, what a ball. Hey, hey. Congratulations. Fantastic. Doctor, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, this is a young lady. Look at you. Going to be champagne, my darling. I love champagne. All right. Uh huh. Thank you very much, darling. I'll um, make it brief. What we're celebrating here is your 100th show. Uh, that adds up to an awful lot of interviews. Yeah. Uh, and not all of them to our Kate's liking. <laughs> I um, remember one in particular, that couple who did sex there. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, God. came to blows. Why'd you have to bring that up, Virginia? <laughs> yeah, if I remember, um, it ended with that awful woman saying very sympathetically that I obviously needed help. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, we're, sure. we're here to say that you've got a lot of fans, Kate. And that uh, includes all of us here. Your Monday through Friday family. Yeah, hey, some family. Eh? You should be so lucky. Yeah. So, to That's the true. star of our show. To Kate the Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kate, Kate. 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 Here's to another hundred shows, and to this reward we so richly deserve. One hundred shows, huh? Makes you think. Well, I better not think or I'll get depressed. You're depressed. What about me? The oldest floor director in the free world. Come off it. You're precisely what you want to be. You don't have a care in the world. You don't even own a cat. No, I got a few problems. Hey, Luke, it's about the music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really getting to me. <laughs> no, I don't think this really is a safe park. <laughs> I mean, where is the cheap and dignified service of yesteryear? <laughs> Listen, kid. I got a handball date at 520. If I have any more of this, I won't be able to remember the combination of my lock. Never mind, hit the ball. Oh, no, you don't. You will not abandon me on my 100th birthday. Luke, another round for the old folks here. And we want madder music, stronger wine. <laughs> to have inconvenienced you by being out when you call. Oh, I'll be here. May I inquire why you have called a meeting for Saturday morning? Okay. I'll just have to wait. Night, night. Sleep tight. Your father is in a very strange mood.
I just have to see him. Nothing wrong. He's okay, isn't he? Oh, you're right back to normal. He is impossible, though. You know those checks I send him? Mm -hmm. Well, he sent the last one back to me. With a wee note attached. Your need is greater than mine. That's your dad, all right. So, Tony, I was wondering, how'd you like to come up and see Dad with me? Oh, Christ, Kate, you never said anything on the phone. I came here to talk. Yeah, well, we can talk on the way up. I'd love to see your dad, but not today, okay? Will you please sit down? Okay. I'll sit. So talk. Well, it's been four months since you threw me out. I did not throw you out. I held the door open while you swept out. Let's not argue. Who's arguing? Kate, I've been thinking. Uh, I guess I'm just tired of us being uh, ambiguous. I mean, we're not together. We're not officially apart. So am I. I'm tired of it. The cat's a lousy conversationalist. Oh, hell, Tony, I'm no good at courting my own husband. Why don't you just come up and see Dad with me? It'll make him so happy to see us back together. God, you're as impossible as he is. Kate, what I'm trying to say is I can't keep up with you, Kate. I never could. I'm just an ordinary guy. It suits me to have an ordinary life. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. So we had a few rows. They weren't that bad. I remember what it was like. I'd come home one night to a seven-course dinner of flowers, candles, wine, the whole bit. You'd have knocked yourself out. But I thought you liked that, the whole bit. And the next night, I'd be sitting here alone with the cat, praying that you'd have enough sense to let Lee drive you home. Oh, now, you're not suggesting that Lee and I... Hey, you know I'm not. I'm talking about us. About what we should do with our lives. Now, surely we've had enough time to decide. Are you saying you don't care for me enough to make an effort? Kate, nobody could ever love you enough to convince you of it. No curbside psychiatry, please, Tony. I'm not ready for this. You should have warned me. Look, we're not going to settle our lives this morning. All right. You win. Another day. Give my regards to your dad. You drive careful, huh? There's a cup on your tail. No. I kept to the speed limit. So I, uh, I got your check and your wee note. What's that all about? I may say you're looking just fine. And so I am. <laughs> what the hell's in all these bags? Throwing your money around this year. That's right. <laughs> What's this? Chicken divan. Dear God. Oh, I'm sure it's very nutritious. Uh, could we just stow all these delicacies, please? I, I, I've got to get to the hardware store. Would you mind changing your sweater? Well, I mean, honestly, Dad, I swear you had that one before Mum died. Where's the gorgeous sweater I sent you? I wore it once to the Legion. The boys said it looked like a hippie. <laughs> You, Catherine, Mr. Forbes, I want to get a snap of you two. Hello, Mrs. Donovan. <laughs> Dad says you're taking very good care oh, of him. Oh, it's nothing. It's good to see you. I've been watching for you to come out. I've wanted a snap. You remember my granddaughter, Molly? She's such a fan of yours. Well, then, get a snap of the TV star by herself. Oh, come on, Dad. Is this okay, Mrs. Donovan? 
Maybe you should lean on your rake, Dad, then you won't look so miserable. That hardware store's gonna be closed. Yeah. Move in a little closer, Mr. Forbes. And quit your grumbling. Ready or not, smile. You're on candid camera. She always had a good enough report. Oh, she did indeed. But you pick on the one mark that wasn't up to scratch. Oh, yeah, well, that'd be arithmetic in public school and trig in high school. I always barely squeak by. <laughs> but you had good enough remarks for the university. Uh -uh. You were stubborn, though. Had to do everything on your own. Couldn't wait to get a job. But you've done well, I must say. Oh, my goodness. This girl of yours, she's come a long way. Oh, she's not done too badly. <laughs> See no more. Just for once, be reasonable. We won't live in the city. It worries me, Dad. I can't stand to think of you living alone in that house. Last winter, when Mrs. Donovan called me, I can tell you it nearly gave me a heart attack. And ever since, I've been taking my pills, and I'm just glad. Just say no more about me going to fetch home. Oh, Dad, you spend every night at the Legion. And you're always visiting Angus at the home. I'll not be cooped up with those old buggers day in and day out. I got a home of my own, and it's paid for, which is more than you can say, madam. Please sit down. Well, they're almost done now. And uh, I'm afraid, Dad, I'm going to have to hit the road a minute. Oh, you hang on a minute. You haven't given me much chance to ask about you and Tony. It's crazy business, him in a flat. Uh, uh, I just don't understand young people nowadays. Are you or aren't you getting back together? Dad, this is my business. I am not going to discuss my marriage. And I'm not a child anymore. I won't have you push me around. Oh, shit. Simmer down now. I don't like that language. And I'm not very impressed by your sophistication. Mm. Oh, I know it's fashionable these days. You get married one day, the next. Take a flip. Dad, we've been married for seven years. You know perfectly well I'm not one to admit defeat. Lightly. Well, how's he a girl, then? Someone else. Dad, will you just quit picking on me and prying? No, he hasn't, okay? Now, can't you see? I'm tired. I'm sorry. Dad, I'm sorry. Let's just stop getting on each other's nerves. I'm tired. It's, it's this job, I guess, to be such a grind. It's all this work and, and effort. It's for 27 minutes and 50 seconds in here time. Hmm. I'm tired. That's all. I'm just tired. Oh, yes. The world is too much with us. Late and soon. Getting in and spending, spending we lay waste all our house. house. Always stood on your own two feet. Stay the night, Catherine, in your own bed. Yeah, can you get a sign for me? Where the hell is Kate? I don't know. I'm not a keeper. 
It never fails. On a bad day, you can bank on Kate to be late. Yeah, it's one of these times I could gladly sacrifice some of that so-called star quality for just yeah, a little reliability, punctuality. Oh, yeah, well, they don't register very well on a small screen. What the hell, Virginia? She works like a brute. God damn it, where is that woman? Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. That's a small floral tribute from one of your biggest fans. Mm, thank you for that beautiful party. It was wonderful. They're lovely. Thanks, Kate. Would you, uh, <laughs> you really shouldn't have, especially since you're late. Sorry. And the lineup is a shambles. That, um, singer, Sue Ann Devine, Angie's been calling. She must be held up in traffic. Uh, the guy from St. John's Ambulance who's doing, um, what's it called? Oh, Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. I practice saying it in the shower. Yeah, okay. We picked up his dummy, and he's here, the guy. So you'd better make the interview stretch until the first commercial break. Uh, I suppose you'll have to do something with that dummy. I've put Sue Ann uh, at the end, just in case. What are we doing with someone called Sue Ann? Madame, will you get into makeup? Okay. Okay. There you are, me dear. Well, I guess I'll be breathing life into two dimes today. No offense to your divine one, Rosie, my love. God, this is shaping up to be a three valium show. Thanks, Rosie. Ta da! The head back, yep, yeah, uh, neck up, nose pinched shut. Well, that's right. <laughs> You're a very quick learner, I must say. Even Annie thinks so. Annie? Uh-huh. Uh, well, I've had a very good teacher. Thank you very much, Mr. Wills. You're welcome. We'll be back after a short break with our next guest. Stay with us. All right, that's a cut. Okay, guys, we can get this out, get the table back in. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, well, that's very interesting. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Can I just uh, snap it up, please? Yeah, sorry. Katie. Is this Sue Ann Devine? This is Kate Forrest. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sue Ann. Mm -hmm. And Devine, she is. Give me a turn seeing you wrestling that dummy like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How are you have to do that thing, huh? So, Ann, I thought hands. we'd begin by Took me right back to when I was a kid in Belle Island. Oh, one winter, my Uncle George, he was a merchant seaman. He'd come home with this catalog. It was full of pictures. I, I remember it so clear. It'd come from the Hong Kong sex shop. That's what it was called. <laughs> and there was advertising this contraption. It was called the Sailor's Wife. Of course, it had to be inflated. But I tell you, that catalog went around Belle Island like a fart in a cane bottom chair. So, <laughs> Ann. Uh, ten seconds there, okay. Seven, by camera one. six. Five, four, three. We're back with our next guest, Sue Ann Devine. She's won just about every country music award, and I can tell you she's just as dazzling in person as she appears on the screen. And it's a real thrill for me, too, Kate. It is, Kate, isn't it? I suppose you're going to ask me, because I'm a Newfoundlander, you're going to begin by saying, do you miss the sea? No. As a matter of fact, I want to hear about your early days as a performer. I understand you started your career singing in a union hall. That's right. In Belle Island. What would you sing? Oh, stand by camera two. Come gather all around me and I'll sing to you a tale. Take two. About the boys in Carmenville who almost went to jail. It happened on a November night when all hands was asleep. We crept up over to Joe Carp's Hill and stole Aunt Martha's sheep. Woo! We crept up over to Joe Carp's Hill and stole Aunt Martha's sheep. A little, little bit later, about 12 o'clock at night, we had the sheep a cooking and everyone feeling tight. The smell of mutton and onions, no man could ask for more. We were chug lugging to be when the Mountie walked through the door. Come on in and join us, sir. We're having a piece of yeah. Come on, let the house on fire. <laughs> Will he come My on? God, a so concert. We give him a piece of the sheep. Yeah. He said, this is the finest moose I think I ever eat. By two o'clock in the morning, he bid us all good day. If we get any word on the sheep, sir, we'll call you right away. Oh, if we get any word on the sheep, sir, we'll call you right away. Oh. Ha, la, 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 la,
bunch of promise I know you'll keep. If everyone was as good as you, she wouldn't have lost her sheep. After he left, we put the, the piece in the oven to roast. <laughs> we may have stolen the sheep, boys, but the Mountie... No, no, no. For 30 seconds Stand to end show. <laughs> Stand by to wind her up, Lee. Fifteen seconds to end show. Ten. Wind her up. At least I think I am. Take four. Four. Uh, straight talk. Straight talk. <laughs> straight talk. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, we're off. Wow, that was quite a show. I didn't think Kate was ever going to see the signal, the end. Neither did I. Tell me something. Tell me honestly, would you say that Kate was a little too exuberant today? You think she was high? On the floor. Thank you. Virginia, yeah. you want me to get John Reynolds? Oh, yeah. Okay, he's available next week at the end of the week. Yeah. Well, we the Birdman. Coffee's here. Okay, where's oh. their fries? Not bad, eh? Not bad. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, Freddy! Freddy! I had you going. I had you going, no. Are we going to eat real coffee? Yeah, Flash. I brought real coffee. Freddy, you're such a fool, Freddy. Of course, why won't you let me be on the show? I'm very funny. Yeah. I could be a big star, a big star. Well, look at this lineup. Any inspirational ideas? Oh, yeah. You won't like them. You know that Senator Bannerman? His new autobiography is just a beauty. But, uh, it's an insult to interview him in eight minutes. He's an old man. Kate, what's happening to your memory? We had this argument last week. I didn't win, did I? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't forget that. Mm -hmm. Kate, Kate. Well, I'll be right back with another inspirational idea. Hello. Yeah, here's okay. something, Virginia. Uh, there's an official. Shh, something wrong. No, I know. It's been hard on you. Yeah, I'll uh, be there as soon as I can. Oh, no, no. I'm all right. Bye-bye. It's my father. It's a woman who came in to do the cleaning. Well, you take her home. Don't you worry about a thing. We'll, we'll um, get Anna to replace you. Come on, Kitty. I'll, I'll take you home, love. Ten seconds there, Kate. Can't you see? I'm tired. All day, the whole day, the whole day, the whole day, the whole day. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's all. Tired. Tired. I'm sorry. Just tired. Stay the night, Catherine. Then you'll go to bed. Watch yourself. You come back for a cup of tea, eh? You and Tony. I'm afraid we can't, Mrs. Thomas. I postponed a business trip to get here, and 
Pete says she's fine, so I'm going to catch a plane out tonight. Yeah, but thank you for the many cups of tea, Mrs. Donovan. And thank you. Thank you very much for all the things you did for Dad. He was a fine man, your father. Thank heavens he didn't suffer. You could tell. He looked so peaceful. I could hardly believe it when they said he'd been dead the whole Excuse day. Me, Kate, I know you want to speak to Angus and the others before you go. Excuse and me. He Stop. was so proud of you, dear. Why, he always said you were better than a son any day. Oh, I want you to have this, dear. I took it the day you were down, remember? And it turned out so well, I had it enlarged. This isn't Ruthie. Hmm? Oh, my God, has it been that long? <laughs> Hi, Ruthie. <laughs> you won't remember me. I'm Kate. You aren't living in this neighborhood. Oh, no. Oh, Kate, I'm so sorry about your dad. I meant to call you. No, Sheila, I meant to call you. You're divorced from George. You know, just this morning I was thinking I have got to get together with Sheila. I just got to talk about old times. Ruthie, why don't you go and play for a bit, okay? Go on, love. I won't be long. Yeah. It just said, there isn't really anybody except you and Tony, of course. I really knew Dad. I just feel so helpless. Look, nobody could have been a better daughter. <laughs> Knowing him, he probably never told you. But you really were the apple of his eye. <sighs> What a performance. You know, I never cry at home. I wait till I'm out here. Kate, you're being too hard on yourself. Because it's just good to talk to somebody. Can we have lunch tomorrow? Or maybe we can have a drink later on? Okay, I'd love to, but I can't. Not today. Why don't I give you a call? Come on, Ruth, there. We'll be late. Take care of yourself. What's on your mind? You sound upset. Where the hell are you phoning from, anyway? I uh, came out to phone because Ruth has such big ears now. She's at that stage. Tony, I ran into Kate today, and she's in really bad shape. I felt so sorry for her. Look, you don't understand. Kate has such a low opinion of herself that she'd never open up to anybody. I'm certainly not the one to make any suggestions right now. I'll put him back. It's okay. You, you go home now. Night. Our griefs and disappointments are all part of living. Dr. Brand's book is called Deliverance from Daily Stress. I strongly recommend it. And I'm Kate Forbes, winding up another week of Straight Talk. See you on Monday. Thought I heard your voice. What are you doing? Kate, you shouldn't be. Shouldn't be what? Mm -hmm. 
I just decided a minute ago to pour myself a nip. There's nobody around. There's no harm done. Now, yeah, come on, kid. I'll take you home. Oh. You know, it's a funny thing. When I'm home, I want to be out. When I'm out, I want to be home. It's been very strange this week without work. You know, I just realized something today. What? I got no friends. I guess the last few years, I just sort of disappeared into Studio Four. Lee? Mm -hmm. You're my best friend. You know what? Mm. You're my only friend. I figured you needed it. Oh, dear. Did I snore? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's say you look about 12 in that kooky hat. Mm. I mean, a mature 12. Well, then, Skipper, how about a mature scotch? The sun seems to be well over the yard arm. Well, I forgot to pack any booze. I figured it wouldn't do us any harm just this once. I, uh, I want to say something to you. Now, promise me you won't get mad. Who's mad? What have I done? Uh, I know it was a stupid thing to do. Drinking at the office. Hey, kid, I understand. You were lonely. You were feeling lousy. I know how you're feeling. Well, it's only a week since you're dead. Uh, uh, uh. Never complain, never explain. Oh, God, I feel good. <sighs> I just want to say one more thing. About Virginia, you got to be careful with her, kid. Oh, I know. She's a very uptight lady. Well, you got to understand, she's got a very big thing about the booze. Yeah, well, I heard her ex-husband had a booze problem. Well, that's worse than that. It seems her dear old dad was also an alcoholic. So you see, the lady has a right. Poor Dane. Well, Lee, my dear, don't fret. I ain't gonna screw up with Virginia. I promise. Thank you. And thank you for that sleep. It was so sweet. You know, that's the first decent sleep I've had since I heard about Dad. But from now on, it's clean living, clear sailing. That's a promise.
daughter. It's just got to be Kate Forbes, even with the dark glasses on. We both watch your show every day, dear. Uh, I wonder, would you sign our programs? We've, we've been to a fashion show. Well, that's awfully nice of you to ask. I always feel a little foolish. <laughs> You're meeting someone. This is very nice of you. You're like a friend. So outgoing. Well, you're seeing me after hours like this, Doctor. <laughs> Glad to be of help, Kate. Sit down. Now I think you're a bit run down. I'd like to see you take some time off. Get right away from all the pressure. Yeah, well, that really is impossible right now, and I'm fine. Except for the lack of sleep. You know, you've been under quite a strain. Uh, maybe you should be talking to somebody, you know, getting some professional help with your grief. I can tell just by looking at you that your father's dead. All I need is sleep. I thought maybe a stronger dose of Valium just for the night to get me over this bad patch. Uh, I just can't seem to settle down. I'm all fluttery inside. Well, I, I still think a holiday as soon as you can manage it. Now look, you're under, you're on 10 milligrams now. I'll raise it. Oh, I'm sure that'll help. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to call me. Let me know how you're getting along. Okay. been getting your beauty sleep. It shows badly around the eyes. I've done the best I can, my dear. I'm afraid you're under the weather. can't do all parts of the game. The Are you same kidding me? He can skate rings around. He can Robin skate with them, but he can't. Now, let, I'll get back to you. Hey. 
Yeah, it'll work better this way. We switched the nutritionist with the guy from Saskatoon, the uh, fitness guy. Angie says he sounds livelier. So let's get those graphics shifted right now. Okay. Oh, good. She's finished in makeup. Oh, Lee, one more thing. The um, film clip. That changes too, right? Okay, as usual, a couple of changes. I'm afraid you'll have to rewrite your first intro. Both Angie and I feel that the nutritionist will be better th on first. Kate, what's wrong? Are you sure? I just told you, Virginia, nothing's wrong. Give me the intro. Come with me. We'll talk and make up. Come on. Rosie, will you order a cab, please? Use the phone outside. I can't seem to get through to you. You are in no condition to do a show. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? It must be the Valium. I, I just forget. Kate, for God's sake, you reek of it. I am not drunk. Kate, we've no time to argue. I've got to get a replacement for you. And you are not to drive home. Rosie will take you to the cab. Get some sleep. Replacement? Virginia, what are you saying? I know you can't believe this, but I am trying to be your friend. This is not the first time. What do you mean? That coffee mug of yours you trail everywhere. I took a sip of it one day after you left makeup. Kate, it was pure scotch. Oh, when was that? Weeks ago, but you were still functional. I figured it was your own business. Now it's my responsibility. And I will replace you beginning next week. You've got to get yourself together. How can I get myself together if I don't have work? Kate, there is no time right now. You will work the show tomorrow and Friday. Tomorrow we'll talk. Right now, in exactly 32 minutes, I've got to get your replacement. The cab's here, Kate. All right, here we go. got it all wrong. That's not what Virginia was talking about. For God's sake, she got a show tomorrow. Look, I was there. I heard what the bitch told me. What do I have to do? If you don't want to drink, clear up. Had enough of so-called friends today. You stupid bitch. Look, do I have to drag you out of here? No, no, no. Don't you waste your time with him. He's not bothering me. You see, this gentleman doesn't miss with girls. I don't think you can even make it with boys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
deserve to be there, even if she isn't answering the phone. No, who the hell knows? Got to get through to her. She is not fired. Okay. It's no good my trying to talk to her. She's not going to go for it, you know. The very idea of a leave of absence. I'm not talking about a leave of absence. I've had time to think. She's got to have treatment. Either she gets treatment for her alcoholism or she's suspended. Lee, that woman needs help. For God's sakes, did you drive yourself home? I don't know. Did uh, anything happen after I left you last night? What are you talking about? At the bar, after I left. We were together? Yes, at the bar. I don't remember. as well as alcohol. It's like being told you have to spend a month on the moon. It could save your life. Help me find the Brent Cliff Clinic. I'm not sure I'm on the right road. Really? My husband drove me here once before, but I wasn't paying much attention. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right around the corner on the right. Oh, right in front of me. I suppose you see a lot of wayward souls in this neighborhood. Sorry to bother you. No, 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 wait. I'll drive you. Oh, thank you, but I can manage. No, if you're ready, I'm ready. Come on. Hi, 
I'm Vivian. You must be Kate. And you're Elsie Hess. Ah, yes. Would you like to come and see your room? Thank you. In here. Welcome home. God forbid. Could you open your bag? What for? I have to check them. A lovely looking man. It's my father. Will he be coming here to visit you? He died a month ago. Oh, I'm sorry. But he doesn't have to know I'm here. I'll have to take your mouthwash. Why? 15% alcohol. Really? Some people come in with two or three bottles of it. <laughs> Can I see your purse? Is this all the valium you have? Oh, yeah, but I'll need them to sleep. No. I'm sorry, we can't allow self-medication of any kind. Well, how am I supposed to sleep? We'll teach you to relax, you do the rest. Oh, God, this is worth going through customs. It's a big border you're crossing. Now, your group meets downstairs in an hour. I'll see you later. She took my Geritol. She said it was 20 proof. No wonder I loved it. I find it difficult to picture you drinking. Oh, yes. I've got a problem. somewhere before? Oh, perhaps. I'm Kate. Oh, I couldn't think of it. You're Kate Forbes from television. Kate Forbes. Yeah, you're the lady that does the afternoon show. Oh, are you here to do show with us? Uh, now, see here, miss. My presence here is not a public concern. He's right. I got a professional reputation to protect. Well, I didn't say I public was... Public hospital or not, this is a matter of medical record. We're entitled to protection. Hang on. She's probably got a tape recorder. I don't. No, no, no enough. Now, just settle down. James, Bill, I give you my word that Kate is not here to do any kind of a story. She's here as you are, as a patient. Now, your rights haven't been violated. And you owe her an apology. Sorry. I'm sorry, miss. I'm a doctor. and You can understand the publicity would kill my practice. Besides, I told him all I'd be in Florida for a month. <laughs> Cream and sugar? Uh, no, thanks. I'll just take Could I have your attention, please? Welcome to Happy Valley. Sounds like an asylum. <laughs> the patients named it. I'm Gail. I'm your health counselor. Well, you all look pretty uptight. That's to be expected. Now, some of you may have dried out already. If you have, you're past the sweaty nights and shaky days. But some of you might have been drinking right up till last night. Oh, would you believe four o'clock this morning? <laughs> I'd believe just about anything. If you did drink till four, you'll be toxic for a few days. Now, you might feel like walking out. But don't do it. This is your group. Now, you're strangers now, but at the end of the month, you'll be closer to one another than you likely are to your own families. So who wants to be close to their families? That might be something you'll answer. It isn't going to be easy. The main thing to learn is you've got to relax. After that, I know you're going to enjoy yourselves. Any questions? Uh, yeah. I don't mean to be unkind, but how can you possibly know what we're going through? <sighs> I remember how it felt when I came here six years ago. As a patient. Enjoy the day. Good luck. I'll be up all night. Insomnia never killed anyone. Sedatives, especially in combination with liquor, can be deadly. Alcohol is the oldest anesthetic known to man. An anesthetic that works just like ether, taken in high enough dosage. The more you have to drink or the more sedatives you use, the more tense you become. I don't know what preconceptions you might have about group therapy. It's, uh, it's not a confessional. It's not anything like psychoanalysis. It's a chance for you to, uh, talk about your feelings. You know, and take a good look at yourselves. 
And you really need a, a fresh outlook for any uh, serious shot at sobriety. Okay, that's it. I think you're free for the rest of the day. Thank you, Howard. Does it seem awfully noisy to you? Yes. Mm. I don't know if I can take it. So, how did you become a drinker? A loser? If you say so. Cut it from my family. It's in my blood being Irish. I, uh, good man's weakness and a poor man's vacation. But Robert, he's my husband. He's making me take the cure. We're only married two years and he's gone back to stay with his folks until I'm dry. I've lived the last month without him and, oh, I can't stand it. I know I'll come back when I'm through here. So you want to quit then? Hell no. I'll do anything for a nip right now. <laughs> only I gotta quit. I'm sure you will. I don't know why I'm so tired. If you'll excuse me, I think I'm gonna go upstairs and lie down. You said you're on holiday. And do they allow visitors? Yeah, you bet. Okay, I'll see you at seven. Okay, so long, kid. Hey, 20 for your thoughts. What? It's the price of a bottle of gin last time I looked. I can see you at dinner. No. No, the noise gets to everyone. You coming to play bingo? I wouldn't be caught dead. That's the way I feel. The one more embarrassment won't kill me. Get out of here. Yeah. Remember, you can't leave the grounds. Oh, swell. Oh, perfect. It's raining. I can't stand it. Why, what? Is it that bad? Oh, they make me sick. Drink and drugs. That's all anybody ever talks about. It's as if my whole life was centered on it. One bloody lecture after another. And they're all so damn nice. I, I could just scream. Oh, I'm sorry. I for a sane voice to come out here and save me and all I can do is talk about this stupid place. Talk to me, Lee. Okay. Uh, Virginia sends her very best wishes. Oh, yeah. Want you back as host as soon as you're ready. I can't do it, Lee. It's that pressure that got me drinking in the first place. Come on, you're the best. You always will be. I couldn't show my face. I feel so bloody common. It took a lot of guts to come out here. Oh. No, come on. I think you're Wonder Woman. You're wrong. It took a direct order from Virginia to get me out of here. Nothing gutsy about that. I, uh, ran into Tony. You didn't tell him? Yeah, I'm afraid I did. Oh, Lee, no. He was trying to get in touch with her. What was I supposed to do? I mean, he is your husband. <sighs> To die. I'm sorry. I just thought he should know. He still cares, Katie. I'm sorry for barking, Lee. Uh, I guess I'm just too tired for visiting, you know. I... Uh. <laughs> Good night, hon. Good night. Thank <laughs> you. 
Raise your arms, and we'll just swing the other leg back and forth, nice and easy. That's it. It's like kindergarten. Use the wall for support if you need to. Let's transfer to the other foot. And easy. Looks so easy. Now get a little bit more adventurous. Swing it out further and back. How do you feel now? Guilty? In what way? I feel responsible for being so free with my prescription pad. I've got a hundred patient cards with acute chronic anxiety on them. My advice was always don't worry. Take a tranquilizer. I could be one of your patients, James. But I wouldn't blame you. Go on. Um, when my, uh, when my husband retired from the consulate, I didn't feel needed anymore. There were no more luncheons or sherry parties to go to. Jack didn't drink very much, so I couldn't have bottles all over the place. He'd search the house, but he never knew how I was getting drunk. I had... Two big vinegar bottles under the sink. The white vinegar was full of gin, and the dark was full of rye. I guess that's what you call home pickling. I was shouting at him all the time. It wasn't that I didn't want him around. I just didn't want him to see how I was drinking. I thought it was my nerves. So I went to the doctor and I got some Librium. But that didn't seem to do anything. So I um, kept on drinking. Then my daughter got pregnant. She wrote me a letter. She said how much she loved me. But she said I, I couldn't see my grandchild unless I stopped drinking. So, the baby's due in a month, and I want to see it. You'll make it. Yeah, yeah. The story scares me. No, James, it shouldn't. I said all that because when I asked for the pills, I didn't tell my doctor I was drinking. If I had, maybe I would have been here a year ago. It wasn't his fault. How do you feel, Kate? Oh, my problems aren't nearly as bad as all that. They just aren't as bad, that's all.
all signed a form that allows us to administer drugs to aid in your recovery. We're going to start that today. I'm talking about anti-abuse. Do you know what it is? Stay dry lining. Take them with booze and you're one very sick person. I've seen your reaction. You wish you were dead. I feel that way already. You take it every day. It builds up in your system. And even if you stop taking it, it stays in your system for a week or more. It gives you time to think twice about reaching for that first drink. When do we start? Sink deeper into the mat. Feel how relaxed you are. Your mind is blank, as though you are looking into a deep gray fog. Enjoy the sensation. You pass the scissors, please. You pass the scissors, please. Thanks. Oh, I like this. I once made rubber to belt, and there was this one bit of twine hanging loose, so I snipped it, and the whole thing unraveled. <laughs> He says I did it on purpose. He says I never wanted him to keep his pants on anyway. <laughs> I think I'll stick to my knitting. What are you going to try, Kate? Oh, I got lots to keep myself busy. I bet you're good at anything you do. Oh, especially when I have a purpose. What are you doing? I'm tunneling out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> for over seven hours. That's the first time in five years, and I didn't take anything, not a thing. Really? Oh. Here's your interviews. Would you like yours now, too? Okay. Oh. Thanks. It's a good place to think. I was uh, hoping to talk to you alone. Kate, why do you feel you have to fight us right down the line? I'm not fighting. Then you're kidding yourself. You've got a problem and you won't admit it. Look, I've admitted all I have to. I didn't sign myself in here like the others. I'm here because I was told to come or lose my job. And I want to keep my job. And why did they send you? Because I was on Valium and uh, I'd had a few too many drinks, that's all. Everybody has a few too many once in a while. Well, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm interested in you. Hmm. Because it's your job. Do you work as hard as you do just for a paycheck? Of course not. Well, then don't assume I do. What do you think we're here for? We're here to help. You've helped a lot of people exactly like you. What do you mean exactly like me? Well, the story's changed, but the profile is classic. You see, the alcoholic has certain characteristics. The first, which is perhaps the most crucial, is the capacity to drink harmful quantities, you know, your physical makeup. Some people are lucky. They get sick or they uh, have horrendous hangovers. They've got built-in controls, as it were. 
You don't have those controls, Kate. Your curse is that you're what is known as a good drinker. Surely it's not as simple as that. No, but it meant you could establish a, a pattern of heavy drinking without, or so you thought, suffering the consequences. You drank to let off steam after work to relieve tension. From there, you're one step away from turning controlled drinking into uncontrolled drinking. And for you, like it is for most women, it took a crisis rate across the line into dependence. My father's death. Right. For Elsie, it was the uh, empty nest, not feeling useful anymore. For Chris, it seems to have started when she got married. And Deanne started, I when she thought her parents didn't want her. And for you, the volume had you primed. You know, I even went to a heavier dosage when he died. I know it's hard to admit. Yeah, I feel like a walking cliche. No, no, it's only a cliche because it happens all the time. But you're the only one who can do anything about it. Recognition is half the battle, and if you're kidding yourself, Kate, well, we're wasting our time. And you're wasting yours. He took the orientation course for the family. Really? Quite an eye opener. I had no idea what she was going through. Now well, I understand. Martin, this is my husband, Jack. Your wife and I took the course together. Oh, he worries too much for me. Oh, it was nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, Jack. I'll walk you to the car. I envy them. She's happy. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big help to her to have someone who's trying to really understand when she gets home. I guess so. It must be weird talking into a camera. Actually, that never really bothered me. My big hang-up is... Uh, not having gone to university. Now, I'm a quick learner. You have to be doing a daily show that's all interviews. But I don't store anything I learn. I have um, <clears throat> what my husband calls a drafty mind. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never know it. Well, well, I guess my biggest problem is I'm always afraid I'll say something that's out of line. So part of your job requires you to hide what you're feeling? I never really thought of it that way. <laughs> Kate! Stay down a bit, I think this thing can talk. I got a surprise. I don't think I can stand another one. Ta-da! It's for you. Wear it in the best of health. Oh, Kate! Oh, this is too much! And? they want us fit, then fit will be. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait to try it on. Let's go out and work out the sweat. <laughs> what do you think, Vivian? Chris, could I see you a minute? Now? Don't keep it too long. Come to my room when you're finished. Chris, getting late. Chris? You there? Chris Doherty? Um, perhaps you should speak to one of the doctors. Gail, have you seen Chris? Kate, can I talk to you for a minute, please? What's up? Um, Chris had to be sent home. She had a bottle in her car and she's been drinking. Oh my God, no! It's the second time. The staff had a meeting after the first slip and let her off with a warning. But it's not fair. Kate, we are trying to develop trust. We can't afford a break in it. Look, how could she be drinking? She's taking antibuse. Putting it under her tongue and spitting it out? Yeah, it's not an easy thing to say under any circumstances. But now's the time. She's in good shape. She has a raft of new friends and a whole staff here to help her if she needs it. And there she is. 
I'll leave it. Thank you, Doctor. Hey there. Shh. Tony. Hi. Hi. You look great. I didn't want you to know. Is there any place we can go and talk? Sure. I think about us a lot. About what you said. And you know, you're absolutely right about me being married to my job. But I think if I really try, I can do things better. Stop letting work control me. Make time for us. You can come back, Tony. Please, Please don't. You're still trying to call the shots. <sighs> I'm sorry. So am I. Kate, I feel like a bastard. This is the hardest thing I've ever done, so don't stop me. I've tried to say this ten times before, and it's never the right time. And it never will be right. I know you've got a million problems right now, and I'm just making more. But Kate, I want a divorce. I'm sorry. Sheila? How did you know? I saw you with her. I just want to put two and two together. Are you in love? Okay. Oh. Sorry, am I calling the shots again? It was over between us. And now we get confirmation. You're making it so hard. I guess I just don't feel too much sympathy right now. Uh, I don't think there's anything more for us to say. Have a good life. off tossing back a hefty shot. I can't get myself up for it. What? All this exercise stuff. I figure the people in the houses around here look out their window, see somebody puffing by and say, gee, Harry, look, another wet brain from the clinic. <laughs> Smoke? Yeah. Please. To relieve non-athletic guilt. Still pretty rough. 
Just saw a ghost. For anyone? I nearly joined him. I nearly blew it. You're talking about what these good people call a slip? Yeah, well, it's more like a full-blown stumble. It's like it wasn't even me. More like you a couple of weeks ago. Like someone you don't want to know. Have you had that feeling of looking at the world like half of it didn't exist before? Every time I turn a corner, it's like a clean slate. And I know that sounds corny. No. Because it's really happening. All my life I felt like I was just a day away from where I wanted to be. Did you do something for me? What? Allow me to escort you to the lineup for our bedtime, Coco. Gladly. I could use a good step. Coco. <laughs> so, I'm like all of you. Um, I started because it was fun and it made me comfortable. When things weren't going too well, I could count on it to pick me up and make me laugh. It was like I was never supposed to be down. And with the veil in, I thought it made things go smoother. But I wasn't really noticing half of what was going on inside me or out. I was thinking, poor lonely me, my father's dead and my husband wants a divorce. And I couldn't admit I had a problem here because there was no way I was going to admit I was out of control, especially to a group of strangers. It's like my TV image, I'm not supposed to have problems. Drinking was great because you're supposed to lose control. And I did that pretty well. And then there's my father. I had so many cups of courage at the funeral that I just stood there wondering what I was supposed to feel. And when it really hit me, it hurt. I wanted to stay numb. And I couldn't admit it, that I had a problem because you weren't supposed to say things like that. Never complain, never explain, that's what he taught me. You worked out problems on your own. Do you feel that works for you the same as it did for him? Well, my father hated it when I cried. He was always so strong. He never cried? No. I wish he had. Do you feel he loved you, Kate? Oh, I know he loved me. I just wish he could have really showed me. When he died, you knew that could never happen. Does that make you angry? Oh, he was so good. I can't be angry. See, I just wanted him to hold me. And so I tried to do everything better than anybody else. Just so he hug me. sounds so simple. It's so stupid. I had to earn it. All I wanted was a hug, but I couldn't ask for it.
sell your share of the garage? No, I don't think so. Uh, I'll remain the lesser partner. I figure if I stop stubbing my face in the floor every morning, business is bound to pick up. <laughs> Booze, Valium, Librium. Your brain can't tell the difference. All depressants. They hit your central nervous system and put your whole body on hold. It's like a coiled spring. And it will keep going on, up and down, until it levels off here. Huh? About a, about a year and a half down the road. One of our problems is that when you dry out here, you leave feeling pretty good. Then you're at home or you're at work. When the first whopper of a down hits you, that's why we need a follow-up program. It's a disease, like diabetes. <laughs> and we want you back here every week for your shot of insulin. What do we say to people? Yeah. That's tough. It's a bizarre bit of irony that when you had a snoot fool, you were everyone's friend, the life of the party. And now you've quit. You're an alcoholic. You have got alcoholism. You'll have it for your life. A reformed alcoholic is rarer than a reformed virgin. <laughs> you have to rethink your whole life so that you can cope without chemical crutches, and especially alcohol. We can do it. I know you can. And I hope to heaven you will. And shake it out. Let's get into a little bit of uh, pelvic tilt, that low back tension. Low back. That's it, and it goes forward and back, and up and back. A little more push, a little more sleaze, up and back, and up. <laughs> up and back, that's it, and just a little further, three. Just a little further, anyway. <laughs> And circles, two, three, four, and Back. Two, three, four, and back. And one, and two, and reverse, and two, and one. A little more play, and back. Two, once more, and one, two, and reverse, two. Did your uh, wife get to our three-day orientation? You bet. She's a changed woman. It's funny how they shape up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll really get to know your family, Bill. Uh -huh. Deanne, I think about the list of drugs you rhymed off when we started, and uh, I don't know how you survived. Shame we couldn't get your family down, but uh, we'll have some extra time to try. I should tell you that uh, Deanne is going to be staying on for another three weeks. Oh, poor dear. No, poor nothing. I want to stay here. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Elsie, you're amazing. I'd like to have you for a mother. And it uh, might happen yet. The staff told me to tell you that uh, when you've gone through the first year of follow-up, we'd like to have you come and work on staff. Oh, my. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> James, I had a lot of problems with you. I do with uh, every doctor that comes in. It's a respect that uh, leaves me thinking I don't have anything to offer you. Howard, take two aspirin and lose that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wish the group could carry on with you leading us through it. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. Kate. Mm. Oh, Kate. Oh, Kate. <laughs> yeah, I spent a long time wondering if we'd ever get through to you. If Stuart hadn't hugged you, I would have. Tearing apart an image of yourself. That's a very difficult and frightening thing to do. All of us did it to a degree, but... Uh, whew, I... I love you. Oh, Howard. Oh, Howard. <laughs> here, here. Uh, here. <laughs> You see, Kate, it's not the paycheck. It's the fringe benefits. <laughs> <laughs>
Dr. McNeil, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Elsie. Oh. Oh. Elsie. Take care. I love you too. And call me. Okay. What are your plans? Well, like they say, easy does it one day at a time. Uh, Good for you. I want to dive in and put some of this energy to work. Mm -hmm. I'm more nervous about going home than I was coming in here. <laughs> are you both seeing the two-year follow-up? Oh, every week. I want to thank you very much for everything. Thank me in two years. Huh? Thanks, Doctor. I wish you both the best of luck. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Well. I haven't felt like this since I high school. <laughs> I uh, guess I'll see you at the meetings. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you have my number? This is the list that they made up for us. Yeah. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Anytime you need a hug. to enjoy the unusual weather. Not only scarves and gloves have been set aside, it moves mm -hmm. southern Ontario. Mama won't be late. You enjoy the TV now. Bye bye. And Bible, waiting for the January storms that haven't come. Well, one thing for sure. My date's gonna be the most gorgeous girl at the party. Good, you're sappy. Next thing you'll be drinking champagne for my size nine double A slipper. <laughs> Anything you say, princess, but I prefer brandy. Especially from a boot. A big lady's boot. <laughs> I've just been talking about how our treatment program evolved here at Brentcliffe. Now, most of you are graduates of this program. I think it was you, Kate, who called it a month on the moon when you first arrived. Ah, you were a very unhappy girl. Now, there are millions of people who are depressed at many stages of their life. People who can see no human help for their problems. Your response, their response, the response of millions of people is to turn to chemicals, to alcohol and pills, to Valium and the like. Perhaps a combination of both. Instant relief, eh? Instant solution to all your problems. But as you well know, it doesn't work out that way. You can only sedate yourself for so long, and after that, it just deepens your depression. Now, what we tried to do in the month you were here for treatment was, first of all, to get you off the bottle. And then we tried to help you find an alternative to put your trust in people, to set you on a healthier course. Tell me, how many of you felt like taking a drink, eh? Well, it's a good sign that you've come here tonight. Stick with it. Now I'll turn you over to Mrs. Talbot. Well, I don't think that I have very much to add. Um, keep up your exercises. Uh, don't forget your relaxation tapes. And get a good breakfast. Hmm. And uh, please now, at the first sign of a problem, call me. Well, let's have some coffee. Yeah. James. Elsie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, you look marvelous. Oh, thank you. You look great, too. Doesn't you, Jeff? Good to have her home again, I can tell you. Uh -huh. How's the new grandchild? Beautiful. Just beautiful. Almost a month old. And Granny was sober enough to count all the fingers and toes. How many were there? Oh. <laughs> Cheery, group. Oh, no. Are you sure you won't come in? This is crazy. I can't believe I'm saying no to someone like you. I mean, I think you're terrific. Thank you. 
Same to you. No, I was into the music scene or something. The matter with you, if you didn't make it by the second night, I've known you now. Oh, for God's sake, Stu, he quit apologizing. It's getting embarrassing. Okay, I'll say it. I don't think ever in my life have I made love when I was cold sober. I'm afraid if I go into that house with you, I'll just have to have a shot. You know something? I don't think I've ever gone to bed that I wasn't at least a little bit sozzled myself. <laughs> <laughs> Will you walk me to the door? <laughs> I've got to get my beauty sleep for that bloody show tomorrow anyway. Now, you're not annoyed or anything. You fool. Ah, Stu, what's wrong with an old-fashioned romance? Mm. We've got all the time in the world. And what's wrong with being kind to each other? We might even try trusting each other. You know? I think that's what Dr. McNeil was really saying tonight. If you can't trust people, well, it's always a bottle. Guess we might as well give it a try. See ya. <laughs> understand what you're saying but I don't think it's any different for women fighting for the human Stand rights camera two. for any other group it's a long haul take two well we do have to start somewhere mm -hmm. take three but in your book you seem to be demanding instant solutions and I find your attitude towards men uh, pretty simplistic you just can't classify them all as the enemy we do have to inhabit the same world I don't believe that you've read my book I think you're being very reactionary and on that note I'm afraid we run out of time I've been talking with Diane Anderson. She's the author of a new book titled Now. I'm sure you'll find it very stimulating. I'm Kate Forbes for Straight Talk. See you tomorrow. Okay, that's a cut. Yeah, okay, I'll tell her, Virginia. Yeah. You okay, kid? You look a bit wet. Nah, I'm fine. Just that woman really got to me. <laughs> well, the boss lady wants to see you. Uh-oh. Nothing heavy, just wants to talk. Good. We haven't really had a chance to talk since I got back. Hey, how about some Chinese food tonight, eh? Lashings of tea? Fortune cookies? Just because we stopped taking our business to Luke doesn't mean we should stop socializing. Yeah. Hey, we'll do that. I'd love it. But, uh, not tonight. I... I got a date. <laughs> Honest to goodness, old-fashioned date. I'm going to entertain a gent to dinner. I well, you know what they say, never too late for love. Thanks, Lee. Are there any chances at uh, Stuart, the, uh, the core musician? Good eyes. Okay. Bye, Kate. Bye, Ma. Hey. Okay. Okay. Hey. See you tomorrow. Bye. Lee gave me your message. I can remember when uh, it had an ominous ring. Virginia wants to talk. <laughs> well, that seems a long time ago. What I want to say is, I'm glad you're looking so well. Hmm. It's just great the way you seem to have responded to the treatment. Virginia, can we be frank, just for once? I know you're scared stiff that I'll slip, that I'll take a drink. Well, you're going to have to get over that. Because I've learned my lesson, and I know that I'm one of those people who cannot take a drink ever again. Yeah, OK. Let's talk about work. How are you feeling about being back? Well, you got to remember I'm fresh from group therapy. I'm loaded with insights, uh, wonderful revelations. I sort of look at things in a different way. Yeah. That helps me to understand. Because you really aren't the same. I mean, uh, in your interviews. Oh, dear. You're talking about me getting argumentative with that woman. Mm -hmm. Oh, for God's sake. Virginia, when are we going to stop peddling those junk books? I mean, that was the tired of stuff this afternoon. I did read her bloody book, and to tell you the truth, I resented wasting the time. And it showed. You used to be more... more fun in your interviews. Oh, bright eyes. I'm sure it's just because you're getting back into the swing. Well, see you tomorrow. Virginia. You gotta understand. I'm not the same. Okay. Not 
to my resident TV hostess. Mm. Kate, that was one splendid meal. I'm glad to say you do not cook just like my old mom. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you enjoyed your dinner. Even though I did spend the whole time bitching about work. You know, I guess before I never really did that show called Sober. Today I wanted to say, Virginia. I wanted to say, Virginia, I'm sober and I'm bored stiff. Nicely put. Hello. Who? Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. No. Was Elsie trying to reach me? Oh, Jack. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, of course. I'll let you know if, if I hear from her. Oh, dear. Oh, Jack, just be patient with her. I know. Now you take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Elsie slipped. Can't believe it. Not Elsie. Not with her new grandchild. Kate, I've been thinking about what you said. About us being kind to each other. Kate, I don't want to go home. start. Oh, hey, now, if you're going to be Mrs. Talbot, it's a serious business. I mean, it's a question of uh, survival. Protein for breakfast. Did you have your protein? <laughs> yes, ma'am, I did. <laughs> Say, do I get a gold star? No. You have to earn your rewards in this life, my boy. Now, did you take your antibuse this morning? <laughs> Just in case you are tempted to take a drink, you will be deathly ill. I did take my antibuse. Say, Kate, can you smell on my breath? I'm not arguing with you, the leaves were lousy. Last night, they should have been lined up and shot. For all they showed last night, they should have been shot right at the blue line while they're playing O Canada. Say, wouldn't that be something? The flag flying, Harold Ballard standing there with his hat over his heart. You're sick, Barney. Who's sick? We're all sick. Listen, you guys have been having a self-same conversation for at least four years. Barney, uh, could you spare him for just one minute? He's all yours. You will not believe this. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, do I have news for you. I mean, the big time, like prime time. <laughs> I got a call just as I was leaving home from this uh, producer named Michael Kennedy. Never heard of him. But he does news break. You know the one on Monday uh, at 9 o'clock? No, I'm sorry, Lee. I keep forgetting you only watch the sports. Well, dear, this is serious stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I know the show. Uh, uh, Dave Richards is the host. Yeah, the one who brings you news of fresh disaster, oh. OPEC meetings, oh. war, oh. blood, Well, you're going to you wind up and take it back. <laughs> okay, so they're making changes. New title, new format, and the main thing, they want a woman. A coal. Oh, oh hey. You'll be working the show with Richards. <laughs> Why, how exciting, oh, my you. dear. Why, you'll be circling the globe. And that <laughs> Mr. Richards always ever so handsome, always so immaculately dressed. I remember him once in a rice paddy. His shape was still lovely and crisp. Uh, Lee, this couldn't happen to a nicer or smarter lady. When? Well, hey, I don't have a job yet. I still have, have an audition. Two weeks from this very morning. Well, you're going to knock him dead, kid. Thanks, Lee. See ya. <sighs> I'm terrified already. Very much.
must congratulate you, Mike. My wife tells me that we couldn't do better than Kate Forbes. What's the name of that show? Straight Talk. I just happened to catch it the other day, and I thought, wow, there is a woman. I have been looking, Phil, and I think I know what you want. Well, my wife says that she's very warm, she's charming, she's uh, good-looking, not one of those raving beauties who puts other women off. And highly intelligent. She has a nice edge. Oh, no, 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 not too much of that. Not one of those deadly serious dames with big glasses who goes droning on and on. <laughs> We've auditioned quite enough of them, thank you very much. Well, I share your views. It's not a question of male chauvinism. Even my wife understands that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this time, we'll have a look at her first. And then it'll just be a question of whether or not she and Dave register on the tube. Here she is. Excuse me, Phil. Very nice. Oh, but I never it's really see... It's pleasure, Kate. I'm Bill adams Wait. You're, uh, hopefully, your executive producer. Hello, Bill. It's lovely of you and Gwen. It's our pleasure. Now, what are you drinking? I've already got Kate's order. Club soda with some lemon, right? Thanks, Gwen. Okay, come on in. Kate. Michael Kennedy. Oh. We talked on the phone. Hello, Michael. It is nice to meet you. I'm Phil Coleman, our boss man. Well, this is pretty heady stuff for a drudge from daytime TV. How do you do, Mr. Coleman? No, no, Phil, please. Phil, this is mingling with the high rollers, as a chum of mine would say. Good evening. <laughs> Such a distinguished group. Bill, sign of a good party. Jeff has to let himself in. <laughs> Phil, you old SOB. <laughs> uh, gorgeous Gwen. And moral Michael. Our boy producer. And you've got to be Kate. It's a great pleasure. I'm one of your fans. And I'm already a fan of yours. From now on, I'm going to call you Katie. Your usual? Martini. Very dry. To your very good health. To us. Happy days. I still can't get used to the idea of Valium being such a big deal. My mom's been popping them forever since I can remember. I've been reading the literature, and I want to tell you people, it's terrifying. It's so easy. You get hooked on tranquilizers or painkillers or sleeping pills. It's a way of life in this country. And so few people have a clue about how those drugs interact with alcohol. I didn't know myself. I guess I still don't understand. Well, just take my word for it. You add booze to any of the so-called minor tranquilizers or sleeping pills or Darvon, you're in deep trouble. I mean, Deanne, dead on arrival. So do me a favor. When you go to bed tonight, try warm milk. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. We're missing Kate. Oh. I tried to get her this afternoon. Uh, I didn't get a chance to tell you she's out tonight with some high rollers talking about some swell new job. I, I may see her again tonight. I'll uh, tell her you're concerned. It's quite an evening for my father's daughter. My dad never missed that show, you know. Oh, he was pretty irreverent about old Dave. You go on, he's a windy bucket, he'd say. But what a kick he'd get out of me actually working on that show. Dave Richards really is a windy bucker, though, you know. He's a real primetime prima donna. I'm not at all sure about that one. Please, keep my tired blood. Can't we go to bed? You're cute. Cute, cunning. Mm, I am. Could we go to bed? It turns out I'm not really tired after all. Uh-huh. You're bored already with my brave new world. Well, only for the moment. Sweetie, I won't be seeing you this weekend, huh? From this moment on, <laughs> I'm at work on that bloody audition. But I adore you. Bye-bye. And it be for your own good.
really strange. I had uh, a remarkable experience not long ago. I came out of it just full of ideas and insights. They've been rattling around in my head ever since about what's really ailing our society. Don't talk about it. Do it. I trust you. Mike, you have no idea what this means to me. I've become so frustrated doing an eight-minute interview show with fashionable idiots. The latest do-it-yourself creeps. Instant solutions to all human problems. It's like I'm everyone's afternoon shot of Valia. <laughs> I understand. Kate will do the most exciting show on the network, and will do it despite that dummy Richards. Oh, Mike. <laughs> At this moment, I just feel so good. It's not just that it'll be great to work with you. I trust you. You've shown such confidence in me. I want to be straight with you. Please do. I've had treatment for alcoholism. Does that shake you? Of course not. I admire your honesty. Now get to work. Some of you look like you might have trouble imagining yourselves on Skid Row. Well, I was that way once, just like you, disgusted with all the winos in Allen Gardens. And you know what bothered me even more? Seeing the women lining up, waiting for the booze store to open. A woman on the booze is an insult to the human race. <laughs> you take one look at her, you say to yourself, my God, that could be somebody's mother. <laughs> well, as I told you, I went that route, so you take it from a fellow who's been there and come back. And I couldn't have done it without AA. What a carry-on. I titter at an AA meeting and you act as if I'd offer the old boy a drink. Okay. It suits you not to understand a word I'm saying. It's not just the meeting. I care about you, Kate. Every time I call you, you get just a little bit edgier, bitchier. Look, I'm sorry. We try to understand, Stu. I've got so much on my mind. You know how much it means to me tomorrow, that audition. Mike says... I, I am fed up to hear with hearing about this boy genius. I'm sorry. Oh, Christ. Let me out of here. I've wasted enough time tonight. No, look. I'm just a rude mechanic. But I care about you. I know what you're doing, and it scares me. <laughs> no, you're putting all your eggs inside one bloody basket. Well, good luck. I hope it doesn't get scrambled. Thanks one hell of a lot. But you've seen what you've seen. Welcome, Katie, to our slump. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> You're even lovelier by day. Thank you. Don't mind Michael. He always looks as if he's covering a state funeral. You just relax, my dear Katie. Well, Mike, this is it. Give me one control. Let's get this show on the road, Mike. It's not a big deal. I you may be in for a surprise, Bill. I don't like surprises. Okay, but you're I'll the producer. You. Show me. Bye -bye. Yep, in five seconds. In five, four, three. You and up. Go, Kate. The 1980s aren't new anymore. Already there are signs to make you wonder what will be the catchphrase that captures the spirit of the 80s. She sounds nervous. Listen. The 60s belonged to the flower children. The 70s, they were summed up by the me generation. And what will we say of the 80s? Perhaps the phrase that fits is the bottom line, a time of reckoning, when we will have to answer for the way we live. We are a liberated people, free at last from the bonds of religion, patriotism, 
and the work ethic that so constrained our fathers. Now, our only obligation is to self-interest, self-fulfillment, self-gratification. But can we still be a nation? Or have we lost the sense of community that once gave us comfort and courage, that inspired faith in ourselves and faith in the future? Living without loyalties, without common cause, we become, as a people, depressed. We turn for instant relief to alcohol and pills, to material possessions, to an endless series of fads. We are a people on a binge. In the 70s, we used to say, you've come a long way, baby. And now, we're at the bottom line. Well, uh, that was very uh, eloquent. But you know, sweetie, we have a saying in the news game. If you have a message, uh, take it to Western Union. Stop recording. Uh, do you want to check in to see that we got a recording? Uh, I can see your fine hand in this fiasco. I'll tell you something. Phil's going to have a seizure when he sees this tape. <sighs> Just I don't know why you're blaming me. Well, how the hell did it happen? We're expecting a nice, lively dame doing her own thing. Suddenly we get this crazy lecture. Look, Phil has had enough dreary dames. This one's the dreariest of the lot. I'm as shocked as you are. We are a people on a binge. So what are we going to do? We're going to talk to her. We used to say... Maybe Dave can suggest something. Come a long way, Dave. Honestly, I, I don't think there's any point. She just and didn't now? pan out. Yeah, you want to tell me how you're going to explain that to our boss? Roll ahead a little bit, please. Bill, I didn't want to tell you this. I only found out after the party. You guys were so high on her, I thought. Well, we'll let her do what she wants. Maybe it'll work out okay. But now I have to tell you. The lady is an alcoholic. Jesus. That's just what we need. Look, do me a favor. Go down and kiss her off. Politely. Better if you do it. I still think you're overreacting. Ah, oh, for God's sake, Lee, I was there. I blew it. I'm telling you, I blew it. You're being too hard on yourself, kid. I think it's their loss not liking what you did. really bothers me. For the first time in my life, I felt I had something to say. Straight from the heart. Well, maybe that's what bothered them. Maybe that's why I did it so badly. I'm so used to talking off the top of my head. Poor Michael. I really let him down. Well, I wouldn't lose any sleep over Michael. From what I hear, the guy's who work his show, he's not to be trusted. Underneath that altar boy exterior, he has a heart of pure shit. Well, I food for thought. Anyway, what the hell, eh? This is supposed to be a celebration. Great. Good morning. Hi, gang. Hey. Hi, Virginia. Oh, I check with the guests. We just had to pick up the poor who's staying at the Chelsea Inn, and the others will make their own way. Good. So this poor sounds nutsy. I can't seem to get through his head that we're doing an interview and not a lousy poetry reading. Yeah. Kate will deal with him. She says his poetry is the pits. <laughs> hey, Lee, will you stop that pacing? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a bit worried about Kate. What's wrong with her? Well, nothing. Just. Well, you know how tired she was, and I, I took her out to dinner last night, and I just felt so sorry for her. How do you mean? What happened? Well, there's nothing at all. I, I just... 
I just think it'd be wise if we called up Anna and had her do the show today. While you're doing that, I could get to Kate before she leaves the house and tell her to go back to bed. This is beginning to sound ominous. What did happen last night? I keep telling you nothing. It's just that I feel so bloody sorry for her. She's a very proud lady. She's been through a hell of a lot lately. Sorry for whom, Lee? Good morning, all you lovely people. Straight to bed like a good little girl. Oh, Christ. Don't make it harder for me. Sorry. I'll just win my way. Katie. Look, everything's gonna be okay. All you gotta do is persuade Virginia that you're not gonna keep on. You mean I should give my word to Virginia? that I will never have another drink. Exactly. Lee, what good is the word of a drunk? You go back to work. Hmm? I'm off to bed. Here I go. I was calling last night, too. Kate, I felt lousy about us having a row the night before your big deal. Wanna know how it went? I was terrible, that's all there is to say. Crazy kid, I know how much it meant. Can I come in? Oh, geez, do I got this lousy case of flu. I guess it's psychosomatic, you know, but you know, I don't want you to get it because I just feel really crummy. Oh, poor kid. Kate, I am really sorry. Oh, Kate. Oh, Katie. Okay, Kate, I admit it, I was jealous as hell. I almost went off the abuse myself for a couple of days. I wanted to drown my sorrows. But you didn't. But I wanted to. Christ, Kate, why do you push yourself so hard? It's not as if we weren't warned. Don't lecture me, for God's sake. I've had enough for today, okay? I'm not a child. Well, you've been acting like a bloody spoiled child for the last two weeks. You missed two meetings at the break. Look, you need the help. Will you get it through your head? I am fed up. I am sick of hearing about alcohol. I'm tired of thinking about our dependence and our addiction. Is that bloody well full-time occupation? Did you eat your breakfast? Did you exercise? Did you sleep well? Christ! I can't stand any more of that bloody outpatient's pavilion. Those boring bloody people. That's the way you feel, Kate. I can't do anything for you. I can't handle this. Who's asking you? Okay. But there is one more thing. I mean, I almost went under myself because of one little fight. 
I care a lot about you, Kate. God damn it, when I come to the door and I smell the booze in your breath, do you know how good it smells to me? You know I still dream about this stuff? I know what you say. I understand. It begins at 7.30 at Exhibition Stadium. Clancy will start for the Jays. Gale for Kansas City. Blue Jays pitcher Dave Steve has been named the American League Player of the Week. Not only has Steve won three straight games, Steve has pitched three complete games. This is the second time this month that I've had to call Anna in. Now, you know as well as I do we're going to need her for the rest of the week. But Anna doesn't know that. It isn't fair to her. I'll do what I can. You're too good a friend. It's pointless you trying to protect her. Two bouts of flu in one month, Lee, I'm not stupid. What are you getting at? Something's got to be done. Now, you've got to believe me, I have no choice. And I may need your help to calm her down. Just for once, listen to me. I'm not about to fire you. For your own good oh. and for the good of my show, a lot of people are involved, not just you, Kate Forbes. Now, you listen to me. You will bring a supply of antibuse to make up. Nobody but Rosie will know. She'll just give you your pill every weekday. Well, you can't do that. That's... That's an, out, an outrageous invasion of my privacy, Virginia. It's outrageous. It's your choice, Kate. If you're sincere about getting yourself together. Virginia. You sent me to Braincliffe. You had me certified. For all time, I'm a certified alcoholic. I'm a goddamn cripple. And it's hell I can tell you. Okay, God, you make it so hard. Hell. Because I have no choice. Oh, I hate doing this. We've been through this so often, darling. You know I don't hold it against you. Here's to a good girl taking granny pew so she will stay dry.
Screw off! Where we are. Hello. Hey, Sue. Great. I wanted to tell you that uh, Elsie's back. Tremendous. Yeah, well, it was tough. It's been rough for her. The main thing is she's back. Yeah. Everybody misses you, Kate. I miss you, too. Well, I miss you guys, too. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to come to the next one. Okay? Okay. Oh, one thing. Could you, uh, could you give Mrs. Talbot a call? Sure. Hey. Okay. Okay. See you, hon. Bye-bye. Good night, Kate.
Uh, no, I just had a couple of drinks. It was too much to drink last night. I got to taper off. Oh. What? Oh. Oh. Uh, a couple of Valium. Uh, just a few Darvon last night. What? Sure, I'll oh, hang on. Oh. to her she just made hello kate it's vivian she's not there look is there anyone in her group you could call to get right out to her house she probably has no idea how much of anything she's taken mixing in darwin really worries me no she's not coming back on the phone try Stuart. if he's not in uh, that man from her office the one who used to come here and visit her Thank mm -hmm. you. 